Hi everyone, and welcome to The Enthusiastic Buddhist. In this episode, I want to talk about some of the key characteristics of the Buddha's teachings. To start with, one of the important aspects of the Buddha's teachings is that it's not a religion or philosophy that should just be accepted with blind faith. The Buddha warned that we shouldn't just follow teachings or teachers just because they're popular. In the Kalama Sutra, there's a discourse between the Buddha and the people who lived in the town of Kalama. They were confused because many spiritual teachers were coming to their town and praising their own teachings and disparaging the teachings of others. When the people of Kalama asked the Buddha who they should follow, he didn't then just say, well, follow me because I'm the true teacher, I'm right, everyone else is wrong. Instead, he said it was better that they make their own decision about who to follow based on their own examination of the teaching. He said, if the things being taught led you to more harm and suffering, such as having more aversion, craving or delusion in your mind, then you should rightly avoid and reject those teachings and teachers. But if what they taught increased your peace, happiness and wisdom, then you should accept and practice those teachings. The Buddha always encouraged people to first hear his teachings, contemplate on them and meditate on them. He never said just to hear and believe. One of the reasons he did this is because the Buddha's teachings were given in order to transform us, to help us change our negative habitual patterns of behaviour, speech and thoughts and turn them into helpful and positive actions, speech and thoughts so that we can gain some personal freedom and happiness. The Buddha wanted us to actually put his teachings into practice. He didn't want us to politely nod our heads at the teachings and patience and then get angry at the first person who got in our way. You've probably heard of Buddhism being described as a way of life. It really is a philosophy and practice that we should put into practice and examine for ourselves to see whether it helps increase our welfare and our happiness or not. Another important aspect of the Buddha's teachings is that he only taught what was needed for liberation, in other words, to gain enlightenment. The Buddha wasn't interested in standing on a soapbox and just speaking non-stop and showing off his wisdom for no reason. In the Simsapa Sutra, there's a conversation between the Buddha and his monks which highlights this. The Sutra says, Once the Blessed One was staying at Kosambi in the Simsapa forest. Then, picking up a few Simsapa leaves with his hand, he asked the monks, What do you think, monks? Which are more numerous, the few Simsapa leaves in my hand or those overhead in the Simsapa forest? The leaves in the hand of the Blessed One are few in number, Lord. Those overhead in the Simsapa forest are more numerous. In the same way, monks, those things that I have known with direct knowledge but have not taught are far more numerous than what I have taught. And why haven't I taught them? Because they're not connected with the goal, do not relate to the rudiments of holy life and do not lead to disenchantment, to dispassion, to cessation, to calm, to direct knowledge, to self-awakening, to unbinding. That is why I have not taught them. So what this helps us to understand is that the teachings that have been recorded or the teachings that were given by the Buddha, each and every one of them is to benefit us. And if we put his teachings into practice, we will eventually reach the state of Nibbana or more commonly known as Nirvana. I'll perhaps quickly mention that Nirvana is not necessarily a place so much, but a state of mind characterised by bliss, wisdom and happiness. In another sutra, the Buddha says, Just as in the great ocean there is but one taste, the taste of salt, so in this doctrine and discipline, Dharma Vinaya, there is but one taste, the taste of freedom. So again, the Buddha is saying that he teaches only things that are meaningful for us to know and that his teachings will lead us from suffering into freedom and happiness if we are to follow them. The third important aspect of the Buddha's teachings is that we shouldn't expect to know it all before practicing it. There was one disciple named Malun Kapuda who was continuously asking the Buddha questions like, is the world eternal? And will you, the Buddha, also known as the Tathagata, exist after you die? And the Buddha, not feeling that these were important things to know in order to practice these teachings, replied, Malun Kapuda, if anyone were to say, I won't live the holy life under the Blessed One as long as he does not declare to me that the cosmos is eternal, or that after death the Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist, the man would die and those things would still remain undeclared by the Tathagata. 
It's just as if a man were wounded with an arrow thickly smeared with poison. His friends and companions, kinsmen and relatives would provide him with a surgeon and the man would say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know whether the man who wounded me was a noble warrior, a Brahmin, a merchant or a worker. He would say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know the given name and clan name of the man who wounded me, until I know whether he was tall, medium or short, until I know whether he was dark, ruddy brown or golden coloured, until I know his home village, town or city, until I know whether the bow with which I was wounded was a longbow or a crossbow, until I know whether the bowstring with which I was wounded was a fibre, bamboo thread, sinew, hemp or bark, until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded was wild or cultivated, until I know whether the feathers of the shaft with which I was wounded were those of a vulture, a stork, a hawk, a peacock or another bird, until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded was bound with the sinew of an ox, a water buffalo, a langur or a monkey. He would say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded was that of a common arrow, a curved arrow, a barbed, a calf toothed or an oleander arrow. The man would die and those things would still remain unknown to him. So in this discourse you can see that the Buddha is saying that our current situation is a lot like someone having an arrow in their eye. We are also suffering because we're all overwhelmed by the suffering of our negative emotions, mental states, anger, fear, craving, jealousy. And instead of asking nice, interesting philosophical questions, we need to ask questions that will help us right now and help us to be free from mental pain and suffering forever. Now, it's normal to have lots of questions when you first start looking into a new religion or new faith, especially because it's something that could become an important part of our lives. Of course, that's acceptable. I mean, I used to go to my teacher with a list of questions as long as my arm. But it's important that the questions are not endless and that you only ask questions that might help further, that will help further your understanding and practice right now. Don't try to have all the answers in the beginning before practicing. If you already have learned some basics about Buddhism, such as how to meditate, then start practicing meditation now. Don't be overly concerned about needing to know everything about Buddhism before you start practicing. The last important characteristic about the Buddha's teachings that I want to mention is that the Buddha taught that his teachings, called the Dharma, are merely a tool or skillful path for reaching enlightenment, and that even his teachings, Buddhism and one's connection with the Buddha, would all eventually need to be let go of. In the Majjhima Nikaya, the Buddha explained that we should not cling to our beliefs. He said, Monks, if you were to adhere to this view, so pure, so bright, if you were to cherish it, treasure it, regard it as mine, would you understand the Dharma taught as analogous to a raft for crossing over, not for holding on to? And in another part of the same volume, the Buddha exp further explains this well-known simile of the Dharma being like a raft. He says, Suppose, monks, there is a man journeying on a road, and he sees a vast expanse of water, of which this shore is perilous and fearful, while the other shore is safe and free from danger. But there is no boat for crossing, nor is there a bridge for going over from this side to the other. So the man thinks, this is a vast expanse of water, and this shore is perilous and fearful, but the other shore is safe and free from danger. There is, however, no boat here for crossing, nor a bridge for going over from this side to the other. Suppose I gather reeds, sticks, branches and foliage and bind them into a raft. Now that man collects reeds, sticks, branches and foliage and binds them into a raft. Carried by that raft, labouring with hands and feet, he safely crosses over to the other shore. Having crossed and arrived at the other shore, he thinks, this raft indeed has been very helpful to me. Carried by it, labouring with hands and feet, I got safely across to the other shore. Should I not lift this raft on my head or put it on my shoulders and go where I like? What do you think about it, O oh monks? Will this man, by acting thus, do what should be done with a raft? No, Lord. How then, monks, would he be doing what ought to be done with a raft? Here, monks, having gone across and arrived at the other shore, the man thinks, This raft indeed has been very helpful to me. Carried by it, and labouring with hands and feet, I got safely across to the other shore. Should I not pull it up now to the dry land, or let it float in the water, and then go as I please? 
by acting thus monks would that man do what should be done with a raft. In the same way, monks, have I shown to you the teaching similitude to a raft as having the purpose of crossing over, not the purpose of being clung to. You, O monks, who understand the teaching similitude to a raft, you should let go even good teachings, how much more false ones. So to make it clear, the Buddha is explain, explaining that his teachings are like a raft. We're currently standing on the dangerous side of the river with all our troubles and our negative states of mind, but we can use the Buddha's teachings like a raft and help us to reach the other shore, which is peaceful, which is calm, which is nirvana. So you can see from these two teachings that the Buddha wasn't interested in creating a dogma to attract thousands of disciples and followers for benefiting his own status and reputation. He taught the Dharma because it was going to help us to reach a certain level of wisdom and spirituality that we couldn't otherwise reach. Then to achieve final nirvana and liberation, we will even have to let go of his teachings and our connection with the Buddha to realise the final truth. So just to recap, some of the important characteristics about the Buddha's teachings are that one, we need to put the teachings into practice ourselves to see if they transform our mind in a positive way and not merely accept them with blind faith. Two, everything the Buddha taught is relevant for helping us to attain enlightenment. Three, we shouldn't expect to know it all before practicing it, nor should we get bogged down in questions that aren't relevant to helping us now. And four, even the Dharma is simply a skillful path for helping us reach enlightenment and one day we'll eventually need to let it all go. So I hope this episode has helped you to understand the Buddha made it clear to us that if we follow his teachings, it will lead us from suffering and into happiness. But we have to put his teachings into practice and not just follow it because it's the religion we were born into, for instance. Buddhism is a very active religion and in that we really have to be prepared to make some effort and to make positive changes in our behaviour, speech and thoughts. And fortunately the Buddha's teachings provide us with a wonderful roadmap on how to go from being someone who is confused and suffering to someone who is at peace, happy, blissful and awake. So that's all from me for now. Please like and comment if you found this video interesting or helpful. Subscribe to my channel for future videos and for more about Buddhism and meditation check out my other videos as well as well as my website enthusiasticbuddhist.com. So take care everyone and I hope to see you in the next video.